Hey guys, how are we doing? Crypto Insight UK here, bringing you back another YouTube video. So we're going to start off with some news. I don't know if you want to take this as positive or negative. I personally think it's positive. Just in the UK introduces bill to officially legally recognise cryptocurrency as personal property. This essentially gives people um, more room in terms of like legal procedures. It basically means they're protected against frauds and scams that they were the essential takeaways from the um, article or, or the bill itself from the government website. Uh, they will be recognizing cryptocurrency, NFTs, carbon credits, all as um, personal property. Some people took it as bad news because then they started getting into like taxes, etc. But let's see what happens going forward. I think that's pretty bullish news, to be honest. Also, um, we saw Rack Bank, so um, from Rasal Kaima, which is one of the Emirates over here in the UAE, they used Enbridge Multi Central Bank uh, Distributed Ledger to settle digital during digital yuan payment, which is, I thought was pretty cool. Um, and as Lundberg over here on X basically talked about how the IMF is saying that proof of work um, will not be a viable consensus mechanism, and also they might have issues with proof of stake. So a lot of updates in the last few days. Swift discussing digital payments. Then I did a little piece on um, supply inflation metrics of the top four cryptos by market cap since all time high. And the interesting part is Bitcoin since all time high has grown. I don't mean to ask what there. Bitcoin has grown by 4.92% to nearly 5%. ETH has grown by 1.5%. BNB has decreased in supply by 5.5%. But Solana has increased by 55%. Now I'm going to get on to some macro stuff because it affects everything. We're coming into this election period. One thing that I said a few weeks ago um, is that before elections, the two things that I think will pretty much certainly happen. One is that oil prices will be lower and the other is that equities will be higher. Right now, we're at like our, one of our lowest periods ever for oil. Um, and I presume this continues to come down or hovers around this level um, and into the election. And equities are falling off a little bit, but I think it could be because of this trade that we talked about this a lot, uh, the USD against the Japanese yen. This is one of the reasons for the weakening DXY. I only flag it up today as yesterday. It did actually manage to pull back, but it did lose key support here yesterday in this area. What does this mean? Like, honestly, I don't know. But in this period here, let me actually overlay the S&P. I'll overlay the S&P um, just to show you guys what happened. Like In this period here, look, when we started to lose this level for the yen, we had an aggressive drop there uh, in the S&P. So it's something to definitely keep your eye on, guys. Look, if we just line it up, the yen, the yen loses, uh, the dollar uses strength against the yen and people sell off the S&P. Probably it's international holders of the S&P selling out um, in order to capitalize on some, um, to, to get their, their dollars out back into maybe the yen. And it's obviously the yen carry trade, meaning that like people borrow dollars against the yen and then invest those dollars. And if the dollars then coming down against the yen, then they need to get their, like they're probably over leveraged. They have to sell some of the dollars off in order to buy the yen back essentially so they're not underwater on their trade but what does this mean like has this unraveled now um have we seen the majority of what what pain would be if this continued to drop what would that mean for the markets this is something i've discussed honestly i'm not a macro expert so i don't know specifically what this might mean it would mean that the dxy hopefully will continue to fall and that has historically been uh, decent for crypto i'll take the i'll take the uh, s p off there now that would actually like to be removed from my chart thank you um historically the dxy has been inversely correlated to crypto like we've talked about there's about a 71 day lag from the start to the finish i think it took us out to about the 7th of october that i'd be looking at um the 4th of october somewhere around there for um this move here to be to show up in crypto that's how long it took from this previous high right here for bitcoin to start seeing Actually, I'll, I'll overlay Bitcoin just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, this high. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, this high here for when Bitcoin started to move off the bottom. Look, if we look, there's the high to where Bitcoin moved off the bottom. Look, if we look just down below here, what, 
pretty sure it's 71 days that I looked at last time. Or maybe I was talking from the drop. So let's have a look from the drop. There to there, 64. Yeah, about 68, 69 days. And that's the sort of range that I'll be looking at now. So from the drop, let's say 64 to 68 days, 69 days. Let's get zoomed in so I can show you more accurately. So let's say the drop starts to come in here. Um, we're in, in and around that territory now, actually, guys. We should start to see some kick-ups soon. Um, I was looking at the 7th or 8th of October for this to happen. So let's see uh, what happens here. And let's see how this plays out. It's interesting though, like as you can see, there's a lag, but basically when the DXY comes down, um, crypto often goes up because people are moving money away from the dollar and they move that money into assets basically when they think that the dollar is going to underperform. At the minute though, we're still pretty nervous in the markets. As you can see, gold still pushing all time highs here at $2,500 an ounce, which is pretty mental to see. Gold's actually an $18 trillion asset right now. Um, I'm going to show you Bitcoin liquidity in a second, but I just want to show you gold's market cap and in relation to um, in relation to Bitcoin, and so you can just have like a more visual understanding. Look, this is Bitcoin here, 1.148, and this is uh, gold. So that, that's so it would be 18 trillion or 18,000 billion. That's the difference in market cap. And this year, it went from like, I think, around 12 or 13 to 18 trillion. So that's like five, five to six trillion dollars added to gold when Bitcoin's only at 1.14. There's definitely capital out there that could rotate into crypto if the, if the conditions become ripe for it. This is what I've been talking about. I literally wrote about this at the start of the year, saying that I think people would move to gold while the uncertainty is here. When money becomes cheaper, as it's about to, that's when people will probably start to look and rotate into crypto um, because historically, Bitcoin and crypto have been the best performing, performing assets in an inflationary monetary environment or monetary inflationary environment, which is about uh, what's about to happen potentially. So when that exactly kicks in, I don't know. There's normally a lag as well, so it's not like instant. And normally, historically, when we see rate cuts, you've seen everyone talk about it, we see a pullback in equities and will that correlate to crypto? Um, the answer is to that, I don't know. We don't have much data to really tell us in regards to crypto what happens. We also don't have much data to tell us when we get into these sorts of stages of the cycle what happens. We don't have much data to tell us when gold breaks out to all-time highs what happens to crypto because if we look at gold, for example, let me get on the weekly. Um, gold basically has chopped about, realistically. This is the... Bit, this is the high in gold back in September 2011. It's basically chopped about within a range since Bitcoin and crypto's inception. And now gold's broken out. What does that, what does that mean for crypto? Honestly, we don't know. Um, but I suggested that, as, as I said to you guys, people move to gold when they're uncertain and then people will move to crypto when they want to cap, capture gains and they will try and do that if money becomes cheaper and more of it starts flowing. That's basically my premise. Um, that's been my thinking on the space and it makes sense to me I might be missing a vital piece of the puzzle but that's why I've been saying what I've been saying in the short term where could Bitcoin go well we've got some liquidity above us here at $58,685 and we've got some more liquidity up here at $59,981 then we've also got liquidity building below us here at $52,400 and then people trying to jump in long right now for some reason at in fact that's just changed that's just change point of my eyes. Let me just uh, refresh that so that I can give you a more accurate look. I'll come back to this if it's not going to load. My laptop sometimes gets a bit nutty when uh, when I'm recording for some reason. It needs to load itself up. Yeah, we do have some liquidity down here at 51,300 as well. So maybe we could come and sweep this low, 52,000, and potentially wick into this 51,000. But I do really think we are very close to a bottom here. Uh, for crypto and Bitcoin specifically. Talking, I'm going to finish with this chart today. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you one XRP chart as well. Um, two XRP charts because we talk about XRP every day. So this is where I think we are. Nothing's changed. You can tell by like funding rates. Um, people are quite indecisive at the minute. The more shorts are starting to head into the market. 
Um, longs are getting smashed, basically. People are getting chopped out of positions. This is where I think we are because of the fear and greed index. Talked about this as well. I noticed something weird on the XRP chart today on Velo. Um, if, it's, if it loads, and it probably isn't going to show you exactly the same as what it was showing me earlier, which is great um, because it kind of disproves what I was talking about. But essentially, we had a big spike down here in, um, in premium, meaning that a lot of people were in leverage positions. But essentially, for XRP, I feel like we are in like an indecisive territory still, um, like kind of here. Like people don't want to long or short. There's not really a lot of interest long or short. We need to break a range for people to start to get interested. I've talked about this a lot. I feel like if we get these closes above 64 cent, all of a sudden, I reckon you'll see a lot of people short in the market. And so if we get some positive news, then you might be able to squeeze out of that zone. That's what I'll be looking for for XRP. So what the interest, the thing I want to show you, the last thing I want to show you in regards to XRP before we sign off on this video, it's not exactly bullish news. Um, ETH XRP actually set a lower low yesterday, uh, just here, which is only a wick. And um, it will be more interesting to see when we break out of this this little downtrend that we're in now, if we do manage to get that break. But it is um, not a great look when we have set actually a lower low. Something to keep our eye on. Obviously, nothing has changed yet. There's been a while of just setting higher lows. It could be like a liquidity sweep below here. We could see some sort of liquidity sweep. It has looked like these these lows are actually holding. If we if we put that um, trend line of support in there, which I hadn't actually done before, maybe you get a liquidity sweep before a pump to the upside. Let's see what happens. Like I'm definitely monitoring XRP right now. The whole market, in my opinion, um, is just fragile. I wouldn't be making any massive moves. Um, in, in regards to crypto with the Fed rate cut next week and then potential chop towards the end of September and then looking into early to mid-October for things to start getting rolling again. Although saying that, if equities, equities had a good day yesterday when they actually, when I didn't think they were going to, they actually pulled back and had a decent day look. Uh, they started the day off red and then came up and closed the day off green. So or does that end in the Tuesday? Yeah, no, they started the day off red and then closed the day green. Something's going on in the US market. And I can tell you that from just reading around, like this looks manipulated and it probably is. Coming into election, we had Yellen, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, come out on the weekend and say, basically, she's watching the stock market. Um, and if it comes down, then they're going to deploy. And I think people are starting to realize that whether rate cuts do create a pullback i don't know i feel like everyone expects it so i almost feel like it won't happen but time will tell i think it's very fragile at the minute i think things are yeah very fragile on the on a knife's edge and when it's like that there's probably going to be intervention especially before an election there's a lot of moving parts as we've talked about what I would be watching if you're in the crypto space is watching for gold's market cap to change and the correlation of that between Bitcoin. That's why that's the interesting relationship here. I'll be watching the USD against the JPY, the relationship of that between that, the DXY and the S&P. I'd also be watching the relationship of gold's market cap to cryptos. And if we start to see like Bitcoin start to outperform gold sort of thing, that's when we, I think, will get the signal for a larger bull run. That's what I'm looking for. Um, it could come at any time. I don't know exactly when that's going to come, but probably before the end of October. That's that's my personal thinking. Let me know if you think I'm right in the comments or an idiot. I mean, either one's fine. But um, yeah, if you enjoyed, please do subscribe and drop a like and share it with a friend. It helps me out a lot and I appreciate every single one of you who watch. Um, yeah, I'll speak to you on the next one. Peace up. A-Town Downs, Crypto Insight UK would say.